Hey there, YouTube land. Big Dave here. So, uh, I promised that I would put up some more videos because I have some time right now. I don't always have time. Um, so, anyway, uh, I get a lot of questions about uh, everyone's favorite topic. Mouthpieces. So, um, a little at a time... You know, I've, I've discussed this in the past, you know, but, uh, I mean, I play tenor 90% of the time, and then some clarinet, some flute, uh, some soprano. I don't play alto. I, I kind of just got away from it, because in my circle where I live and everything, um, there are so many really top-notch alto players that, um, that specialize in that thing, you know, and that's not my forte. So, um, and I don't need to do that. Like, I, I don't need to get involved with that. It's like a distraction to me, the alto. So, um, this is, uh, you know, like, I'll just talk about these tenor mouthpieces a little bit. This is, I'm telling you, this is everyone's favorite topic. When you, uh, talk about mouthpieces it's almost like uh, I don't know it's um, unbelievable so here I'm gonna tell you here's the mouthpiece that I've used probably on more jobs that I've gotten paid for than any other mouthpiece I I don't know why I don't use it as much now though as I used to in the past because it's kind of worn out a little bit and I don't use it as much but um it just uh, fit so many jobs that I had to play in different ways. And um, it's my old Van Doren T35. And uh, this has got to be, I don't know, from the late 80s? I don't, I don't really know. Um, it's, I mean, the facing and stuff is in good shape. The top is a little worn down. Um, I like this ligatron here. It plays good. And I used to play the metal Van Doren ligature. This plays better. I use a two and a half purple box on here sometimes. But if I wanted to have more of a jazz or a, that kind of sound, I've played rock gigs on this. Uh, you just find the right reed that has a certain kind of thing to it. And with the mic, when you blow into the mic and it's set up, it doesn't give you those no, extra noises. But I, I've played rock gigs on this. I, I even remember one by the waterfront. Um, we were outside by the, almost by the beach. And uh, I had one of those, you know, mic setups and a clip-on mic and all this. And this was the ticket. You know, big fat rock and roll sound. And uh, and this is an open chamber, you know. Uh, it's not even a big opening, you know. But this has really gotten me through a lot of uh, gigs. I don't use it as much, though, now as I used to. And I played a bunch of classical gigs on this, all kinds of stuff. It's uh, T35, Van Dorn. It's been around, like like I said, for this is probably one of my most used mouthpieces. Um, let's talk about my summer mouthpieces. Even though right now it's almost it's almost Christmas, right? But let's talk about those. And my big band mouthpiece. See, if I get called and I have to play like lead tenor in a big band, sometimes I'm looking for a certain sound. So I'll use like my Mark 7. And because um, I like the way it sounds, it has a big bell and it has a big sound. But I use this 9T9 Van Doren. And I usually play a 3ZZ Jazz on it. Sometimes I'll use a different kind of read. It depends on the weather and like the time of the year. But. Usually on this, I'll use like a 3ZZ Jazz. I might use a 2.5 Gonzalez. Um, I might use a 3 Medium Rico. I don't know. It depends. A 3 Soft Rico. It, it, like, again, when I'm getting ready for the particular job, I'll put this on. I don't play this on the Mark 6, though. I don't like the way it plays. I play it on the Mark 7. Um, my Mark 7 is a... Serial number, 275,000. Has a big bell. I like that Mark 7 because it has the same vibration when you tap it 
This is my old Mark VI that I played for forever until that horn just fell apart. I had to get rid of it. You know, it, there was nothing left of it. It was in pieces. You know, I kept taking it to the repairman. He goes, I can't fix this. But somebody bought it. They wanted it really bad. I didn't sell it. It was sold to um, somebody else. That's one of my summer mouthpieces. The other one is this that I, you know, never leave home without it in the summer. For me, that is. It's a, uh, it's a Van Doren rubber T10. And what happens is, like, the last time I used this was in July 4th. I played this outside at the big festival thing. Because, um, you know what happens, like, when you're outside sometimes in the summer and you play tenor? The reeds kind of collapse on you after a while. Um, they just kind of give out. So I like to find a reed that works on here. It's kind of free blowing. Again, it's good with a big band, you know, or a, a horn section kind of thing. Except if I'm doing a horn section where there's a clip on mic, I just prefer to play like an auto link or even that T35 thing because I have a lot more. It's it's more scientific. There's more control, you know. But for playing in a big section, making, you know, big sound, and uh, I have a video on making a big sound, by the way. It's, I don't know when I made it, like two years ago. I don't know, but it talks about, I think I talk about this T10. You want to make a big, big sound, that big, um, you know, subtones, all that kind of stuff that, that, you know, you have to use a bigger mouthpiece. But I don't use it all the time. I use it when I need to use it. This is in my bag of tricks, and when I need it, I use it. But these are, I call these like my summer mouthpieces. These are not my regular lineup, you know, and they're, uh, I, I use these with the Mark 7, by the way. I don't really play these on the Mark 6. I have, my the Mark 6 is a different bag of tricks, you know. Uh, sometimes, I have this, I don't use it much, but I like it. It's more of a classical mouthpiece. It's kind of close. To me, it's like, uh, it's, I find this much better than like uh, C Star, D, E, whatever, you know, the TL4 Van Doren. And I used either 3.5, uh, V12, or V16. I could use a four job on here too. It, it needs a, a nice beefy reed that has a thick tip. Otherwise, it sounds has that third grade sound you know that fourth grade sound but I like this mouthpiece it, and it for I, again I could use this on the mark six or the mark seven it's a round chamber and it plays so um, same with the t35 I could use that on either horn if I needed to it tunes a little different too all right so we're at eight minutes already um, let's talk about my regular lineup the stuff I use all the time the stuff I use all the time on the mark 7 is fill tone 105 this is an eclipse this is my older one it's kind of old it's pretty worn in and used I play three ZZ Jazz on here this is kind of like a rubber auto link but better I've talked about this before. It's not a new thing. I've used this for a number of years. Since about 2014, at least, I've been using this. This is another one that I had uh, Phil Engelman. That's who Phil Tone is. He made this for me later. It's the same basic mouthpiece. This is kind of worn in, too, you know? But, um... And this is an Ishimori copper ligature. I picked it out at Roberto's. I played like four or five different Ishimoris. And I like this one. And um, I have this I use. The other one just has a regular ligature on it. But sometimes I switch them up. And this is another mouthpiece that I got from Phil Engelman. You could tell I like this guy's work, right? This is um, a Berg Larsen that he redid, but it's an older Berg Larsen. It's not. This is back to the 60s at least. Um, 
It's a 105 also. It basically has the same facing as the other ones. But, uh, you know, it has somewhat of a baffle in it. It's got a big sound. I can play this on the Mark 7 um, or the Mark 6. It's got the narrow back, though, like the old Berg Larson. So it's a little tricky with the cork uh, sometimes. But this is a great mouthpiece. Those, All those rubber mouthpieces I just showed you, the fill tone models, I use Rigatti's on those. Rigatti either too hard or three soft. Is that what it's called? Too heavy? Too strong? I don't know. Or three light. Rigatti Classic, that's what I use. I don't use the jazz reads. I don't want that buzzy sound, you know. Okay, and to finish up this uh, diatribe I have going on right now, and my auto links. I can't live without these auto links. I use them like so much. These are what I use in the Mark 6 mostly, almost all the time. In fact, this is what's in the Mark 6. It's a pair of 7s. These are newer auto links, by the way. This is. These are some of these I got off of eBay or Amazon or whatever. Some of these are seconds, like B stock. None of them are refaced. These are just I got the ones I picked out. I have ones, other ones that are refaced. Uh, some of them I did myself, and and they play great. But these are the ones I lean to because um, the size. I'm playing on the seven. One of these is one of the narrower ones, and uh, it's it's a little bit brighter. I use. Uh, Three ZZ Jazz on these most of the time. This is another seven. It's a little different mouthpiece, but they're both sevens. STM. This is the ones I use most. This bag I have a six star, which I like this one also. If the reed is a little bit on the stiff side or it plays weird, and I pick these mouthpieces out of numbers of them, not just you know like. Um, this was a, this is just a Amazon thing. I got a clearance for like $115 or something, you know, and then when it came, I played, I says, oh, I like this one. I've been using this one for a while. Um, but I like to have this mix in my bag. The two sevens are the main go-to. If one, I go in the room and I play. If I don't, when I have, like, I just did this show in Pennsylvania with a singer, a an excellent cabaret singer, you know. And I went in the room and I was playing around. I was there like two hours ahead of time. And uh, I put the one seven on. It has a three soft on it. Yeah, no, a two, a two heavy Rigatti. And I was playing on it, and I eh, it was okay. But I put the other seven on. All of a sudden. Phew, the room just opened up, and I, I loved the way it sounded, and that we did it in the mic, and I didn't, it was perfect. This is another one, I can't, I just have this one, I don't always use it, but I have it. This is a 8 New York, and it's got the very little baffle, it's got a darker sound, but this particular one, this is another one I got off of eBay, it had some damage on the tip, that was fixed by somebody before I got it, but they did a really good job. It's perfect. And it just plays, it has a certain thing to it. I don't know what it is. You know, I can't explain it. You play these things and you find something about it, but this one, it just has a certain thing. Now, I could use this on the Mark 7 or the Mark 6. These other ones, the two sevens and the 6 star, that's what I use like almost all the time on the Mark 6. Sometimes at Berg Larson. And uh, the Mark VI I'm using right now is a 190,000. It's. Did you ever try Mark VI's? You know, they're all different. And it doesn't matter. You have to, like somebody say, oh, this is a great one. This is a great one. This is blah, blah, blah. No, it isn't. Just play it for six months, and then you'll figure out what it is. You can't go in the store and just play one and say, oh, yeah, this is great. No, it's not. You don't even know because you have only had it for two minutes. you got to play them for months before you figure out what's with a you know whether you just get used to it after a while you don't even know if it's good or bad you get used to it and, and that's it well anyway so there it is that's you guys love mouthpieces and then this, this is going to shut off see 15 minutes they cut my videos because i don't have that whatever it is
All right. Have a good day. Bye.